Hi again, everybody. Today we're going to work with equations that need the distributive property on top of perhaps combining like terms or using our inverse operations like we were previously. So in this first example, you'll notice that you see parentheses around a set of terms. This equation says two, parentheses, three x minus six, close the parentheses, has to equal 36. So this means that I need to multiply two by everything inside my parentheses, by the quantity of 3x minus 6. When I use the distributive property, I like to draw these little rainbow arrows to show that I need to multiply 2 by both terms inside my parentheses. So in this case, 2 times 3x would give me 6x, and 2 times a minus 6, or a negative 6, would leave me with a negative 12. I multiplied 2 times 3 to get 6, and then kept the x with it, since that term already has an x, and then multiplied the 2 by 6 to get 12. I needed that minus because there is already a minus in front of that 6, so a positive number times a negative number. I write down the rest of my equation, equals 36, and now I'm going to solve it just like I've been practicing, so trying to get that x by itself. The first thing that I see that's keeping my x from being alone is that minus 12 term. The opposite of subtracting 12 would be adding 12, so I'm going to add 12 to both sides. Negative 12 plus 12 cancels out. 36 plus 12 would give me 48 on the right side. And I'm going to bring down my 6x that I haven't really used yet. I know that 6x means 6 times x, so the opposite of multiplying would be to divide both sides by 6. And I'm left with just x equals 8. Now, similarly to our last station, when we check our work, we need to go all the way back to the beginning equation. We never want to check our work in a simplified equation. Just in case we've made a mistake, we might not catch it that way. So I need to go all the way back to the beginning and plug in the number 8 where I see the value of x. So I have 2 times the parentheses 3 times 8 minus 6. That should all give me 36. I want you to notice that I have a set of parentheses around my x variable. So I represented x as the number 8. And I also have the set of parentheses that I started with in my problem. You do need to have all of those parentheses included in order for your calculator to understand what you're asking it to calculate. I'm going to type all of this in with all my parentheses. 3 times 8 is 24, 24 minus 6 would leave me with 18, 18 times 2 would give me a value of 36. So since I've got the same number on both sides of my equal sign, I know that I solved that equation correctly. So to recap what we've done so far, if you see an equation with parentheses, the first thing you need to do is use the distributive property. So the first thing you need to do is multiply the outside constant by whatever's inside the parentheses, all the different terms. Next, you might need to combine some like terms if you have more than one term with an x or more than one constant term once you're done distributing. And then finally, you need to use those inverse operations. So we want to get the x by itself, doing the opposite, addition, subtraction, and then multiplication and division. The goal is to always get x by itself using those inverse operations. So here's your next problem. This is the problem that's on your worksheet for today. I would like you to pause the video and try this one on your own. If you need a little help getting started, I'll get you set up. First thing I'm going to do is get my train tracks ready around my equal sign. And I see parentheses, so I know that the first thing I need to do is distribute this value of 2. I need to multiply it by the 3x term and by the negative 4 term. I'm not going to multiply by 10 because that's not inside my parentheses. So you pause the video, give that a try, and then push play when you have a value of x ready to check. All right, so hopefully if you're back to the video at this point, you have a value of x that you've already found. I'm going to finish my work so that I can check with yours. So using my distributive property first, I do 2 times 3x, that gives me 6x, 2 times that minus 4 will give me minus 8, and then I still have this plus 10 over here that I haven't dealt with yet. I'm going to move down my 26 on the other side. So now I have a new equation that says 26 equals 6x minus 8 plus 10. 
The next thing I need to do is look if I need to combine any like terms. In this case, I do have two like terms. I have a minus 8 and I have a plus 10. Those are both constant terms, terms with no variable. So if I take negative 8 and add 10, I'm going to be left with a positive 2. You can always use your calculator just to make sure that your symbol is correct. I'm going to move down my 6x and move down my 26. So my new equation says 26 equals 6x plus 2. I need to do the opposite of that plus 2, which would be subtracting 2. 26 minus 2 leaves me with 24 equals 6x. And finally, I'm going to divide both sides by 6, which leaves me with an x value of 4. So hopefully you got x equals 4. If you didn't check your equation or you checked it and had the incorrect answer, you might want to go back and fix it now. I'm going to complete my check. So remember, I'm coming all the way back up to the beginning. 2 times 3x minus 4 plus 10. I want everything together. Remember, one set of parentheses around my x value, another set of parentheses were already in the problem, so I need to make sure I have both. I would type this all into my calculator all at once, but if we want to talk through it, I would start inside my parentheses, order of operations, 3 times 4 would give me 12, 12 minus 4 would be 8, 2 times 8 would be 16, plus 10 would give me that 26 that I was looking for. Your calculator can do all that work for you, but sometimes it's a good thing to just double check and make sure that your answer makes sense. All right, so now you're off for station three. Go do your practice worksheet. Remember, we're distributing first. We're combining like terms if we need to, second. And then you're just using your inverse operations to get x all by itself. Solve and check.